Greetings, dear ones. Greetings and happy Earth Day. This is April 22nd, 2022. And I do apologize to all those who uh, were planning to tune in live. I had a client emergency situation this morning and it just backed everything up. So um, we are starting a bit late today but we all are here for and on behalf of the earth i do hope um you know this is a day to bring attention to the earth and to what's going on in the earth what is not going on um, and how we're affecting it and what we can do about it and there's plenty of reports there's plenty of shows there's probably even hallmark christmas hallmark cards for it and you know while it's wonderful that people do listen and tune in and become aware of some of what's going on but we're in a crisis situation you know and it's no accident that i had an emergency client situation this morning because that's what i wanted to you know bring forward is that we really are in a crisis situation for our very existence on this planet in many ways but all of those other ways be it even um, war starvation uh, attacks uh, gunfire what have you yes they are all threats however not all of them pale in comparison to what's so out of balance with the earth that our very existence on this planet is endangered and that isn't an exaggeration um, scientists have been warning us and bringing more measurements and more proof and more evidence and we can see that our in our own lives we can see it in our own neighborhoods we can see it in the places that we have visited um, and then revisit again and see the difference and we can feel it because the earth itself and our bodies are intricately linked. This is, this whole system is a design wherein we're not only interconnected, but we are interdependent. And we can't do without the earth she can survive has done for millions of years will continue to do so but we cannot on this planet unless we make some radical changes and you know we talk about it we want the governments to do something about it we want organizations to do something about it but what are we doing in our own lives and those of you who have listened to these talks um ancient future wisdom episodes for the last year and a half off and on um know that what i've been speaking about is how we internally in our transformation are able to be in relationship to ourselves differently and thereby in relationship to others and the planet and you know, one of the animal helpers that came forward today was the bull. And the bull represents um, many things, of course, in many different cultures. But anciently, it was an animal of sacrifice for the greater good, for the future. And so the question then stands, what are you willing to sacrifice for this planet to continue for the children and grandchildren and generations to come because we're at a point where if we don't make those changes those generations are not actually going to be able to live so we are taking their future so you can always invite in this case the bull to assist you with what you want to give up what is no longer working for you not just personally but what's no longer working in the world it does not feel good to you anymore what 
um, you know, if, if you don't feel something, then it's very, very difficult to relate to that person, that piece of land, that tree, because it remains a thing. And unfortunately, that is how many have viewed the earth for a, quite some time, and particularly those who attempt to dominate and own the earth, the resources, um, with their own personal agendas and of power and, you know, greed, of course. But this has been the way of our species for all these many thousands and thousands of years. And in this evolutionary leap that we are in the process of making, we're standing on the edge, we can either leap forward into the future and have this and, ex and, and enjoy and learn from and give this back and forth relationship to the earth and all of its inhabitants because all of its inhabitants matter, all of its inhabitants play a role, all of its inhabitants have a key thread in this magnificent web. And by, I'm, by all its inhabitants, I'm referring to every plant, every insect, every animal. And the old way is to conquer, to um, control, to take what you want and damage or pillage or rape the land, the environment, the animals, the ecosystems, because it lines your pocket. Or just for the desire and the feeling of being in power. And we're certainly seeing that in great detail in the war in Ukraine that Russia has come in and killed and raped and pillaged, which means taking what they want from what's there, um, abusing and treating the land and the people and the animals as if they have no worth, they do not matter, um, that they are simply things in the way of what I want, um, and simply because I can. You know, I have more firepower so I can conquer you. N no regard to anyone's rights or justice or um, the recognition of another's beingness. And this is what we are doing to the earth. And it isn't just a few. We're all doing this. How easily do you you know, kill a, a, a nest of ants. How easily do you plant ornamental trees or ornamental uh, flowers even though it is not of your, it's not natural to your region or it's not feeding the land and the insects and the bees and the butterflies which are key elements in that whole circle of life. So there's so many things that we can do on a daily basis. It is easier to grab a bottle of water and toss that plastic away, thinking that somehow, some way, it's going to be recycled, when in fact, only 9% of any plastic has ever been recycled. And now we're finding this in our blood, in our lungs, in our food, in our water. And plastics are a byproduct of petroleum. So think about it. You are ingesting through your lungs, through your blood, through your tissues, petroleum. And this is not, it's not a vital element to our bodies. Other things are, but that is certainly not. So there isn't any difference between what Putin, the Russian leader, is doing to Ukraine and what we do on a daily basis to this planet, to nature, to animals, to birds, to insects, to fish. 
really sit and feel into your actions on a daily basis. Do you let the water run when you brush your teeth? Do you wash your dishes and let the water run and run and run? It is not unlimited. It is not um, something that you can count on forever being there. Uh, again, using different plastics. I People laugh at me because I have one grocery bag of garbage each week. You know, the grocery bar bags that are now banned, and that's it. I have a lot of recyclables, but not much garbage. So I'm very try very hard to not purchase items that can't that have you know containers or certainly don't use containers when I can avoid it and I'm not saying that I'm great but there are so many small things that we can do on a daily basis that can make a huge difference and I entitled this talk today as forest for the trees because we look at certain aspects of our world but are missing the grander picture, the wider picture, the um, global picture. And in that allowance for whatever to happen. And certainly in this country, for the moment being, it is still a democracy and we can choose. So it does take effort it does take some responsibility of finding out what companies are doing and putting your money where your choice is. Um, finding out what your senators and congressmen both federally and um, statewide are doing. What are they voting for? Who are, who's backing their campaigns? We have the right to do this, and we have the responsibility to do this. But we're growing up as a species. That's what this whole process is about, this evolution. When we're children, we you know, don't have any power. We don't have any control over what goes on in our lives. And we're basically trapped in that situation. And in this process of evolution, we are maturing and growing as a species, or at least we have the potential and the opportunities to do so. And again, that does mean letting things that no longer serve us personally or globally. You know, it was very interesting as I was preparing for this um, episode this week and in you know sitting in quiet time and allowing for information to come in not only through meditation but through all different sources because it will when you are tuned in there's a constant feedback loop going on for you um in everything around you and that's what clients learn when they uh, do this work with me and um reclaim pieces of themselves and their intuitive abilities come online and they are exquisitely sensitive to the world around them not in a way that is painful but on the contrary being able to feel and hear the tree and being able to feel and and hear the information that's coming to them through a computer or through you know whatever may be the person in front of you in line it's all here. So we are sitting on that edge of the new way and the old way. The way of separation and dog eat dog and competition is how you evolve, which I disagree with um, Darwin entirely. Uh, well, not entirely, but in great part. And science has proven that that is not the case in the rest of the animal kingdom. So we take that and use it oftentimes as an excuse or um, a rationalization for doing what we want. Much again, like what Putin is doing in Ukraine and what is being done in many other countries and places around the world. But we don't have um, an eye there. We don't hear about it. It's far away and we don't know what even that country, you know, no, don't know about that particular country in Asia or 
it's important that we find out and yes we are massively busy on a daily basis yes we have little time but how much does this how much value are you choosing to give to this life-threatening issue if your house was being attacked would you not do everything possible to defend and protect and change that situation because unfortunately we can't just leave there isn't another planet to go to at the moment and even if it were if that's the way that we do things that we use up and and um, take and uh, control and dominate and then go on to the next then we have not evolved at all of course so it's very very interesting that always as things are going on during the week in the world I have clients that are reflecting many of those same issues or aspects client last night was um, working with you know constantly being used and abused and you know literally her finances her um, beingness was being taken and pillaged if you will and raped over and over and over again not necessarily physically but emotionally and you know taking her very beingness and her very safety and her very security and parents both of them have no had no regard whatsoever for her um, even up into her adulthood of course and they did so simply because they could because they could get away with it because they had manipulated and you know used dominance over this person from a very young age and as she worked that piece very very deeply and we were able to transmute uh, a, a specific aspect of it um, she not only is more free she is free from the hold of that pattern but it's also affecting what's going on out in the world because if we're holding patterns of that experience then it supports and perpetuates what goes on so your individual work on a personal spiritual emotional basis absolutely has great power in changing the way humans or the way spe the species actually interact and you're also making a choice for a new way for yourself when you do that depth work and that's a vote for the new way on the earth wherein we are in relationship and you know there's been much talk over the years of the divine feminine and for me I've been teaching for many years it's the divine feminine way that we're moving into and that way of connection and communication and cooperation and collaboration and communion creating that union and being united in this effort to continue our existence and in some ways the new way is the old way because anciently and certainly in indigenous cultures up and through today that relationship with earth is a constant and it is just part of not only the culture belief system but just everyday life you go through life as I try to share in all of my workshops and teachings that this consciousness that everybody talks about is not just in your head it's in a feeling sense if you don't feel for the water if you don't 
allow yourself to receive water and all that it is it how it feels how it smells how it tastes um, the sound of it the sight of it if you're not able to very deeply receive that and give back your recognition your acknowledgement your um, appreciation your pleasure in that interaction then it really doesn't matter what we do as activists it really doesn't matter how many steps we take if we still see this earth and nature as a thing then we're going to be chasing our tails so I encourage you as you're hearing all of the drastic um, situation in so many different settings in so many different ways uh, one of the things that I was you know led to entitle this um, particular episode the forest for the trees um, not only for the reasons I mentioned but because our forests are disappearing and it's more than just carbon capture that trees do trees are the holders of the soil they everywhere a tree is there's an entire ecosystem around that tree and if it's a copse of trees then there is more diversity more um, critters more insects more ability for regeneration and um, rejuvenation of the soil the air the water everything around it so forests hold many 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 powerful aspects of our um, cycles and um, really the whole it holds in place very large uh, anchor points for our entire climate cycle our entire e ecology and as do the oceans the oceans were another aspect that came forward to work with us today in the energetics that we're going to drop into in a couple minutes and the oceans make up so much of the earth they make up 71 percent of our planet and we know very little really about the oceans and what lies within and yet we are using it as a huge garbage dump there are I don't even know the number of um, vessels there I, I guess they're more like um, uh, barges they are actually barges that just float around the oceans with hundreds of thousands of tons of garbage sitting on it and you know that's falling into the ocean it's going into the atmosphere and again we're limiting the habitats we are acidifying the oceans um, which doesn't allow for the coral reefs they're not just something pretty to go look at when you go you know to the islands and scuba dive or, or snorkel these are they hold something like 80 percent or 83 percent of all of the life in the ocean is out of those coral reefs um, and surrounding them and again it's a huge ecosystem that brings what is needed to the larger part of the ocean so we are devastating so many aspects of our own home and we're all aware of that and there is great climate injustice as well and I would ex invite you to explore that and certainly um, we, it's very very evident there between China and the United States and Europe 
the majority of the pollution on the planet of every sort is created and yet other smaller countries are paying for it. We used to send our garbage to China and now it's being sent to some of the smaller countries in Latin America and Asia. All of this is going somewhere and we're so used to living in luxury and ease in this country. It really is going to take an extra effort for us to make those choices. So I invite you to explore what climate justice is. I invite you to explore uh, nature rights. There was a recent, I believe it was last year, a ruling in the world court that it is now a war crime or on the level of genocide if someone is found to knowingly and purposefully causing harm to an aspect of our environment um, for the benefit of whatever and they can actually be tried and punished now whether that's actually going to be um, implemented is another thing but it is on the books and that was a huge huge leap a, a very big um, step in the right direction just as we see you know all the crimes again I keep going back to the Ukrainian war because it is such a blatant and beautiful outpicturing of everything that we have been, everything that we have done to this earth, to one another, um, over the last hundred thousand of years, a couple hundred thousand years. And this is the point to change this is the point where we can make it completely different and that isn't just in our behavior it's in our internal human nature aspects we can't move into the level of technology that is available to us if we can so easily destroy and kill and pillage and rape it's not possible right now we're all hovering under the threat of nuclear devastation and that's only one of the major ways that we can destroy this whole thing and if that's what we choose fine but if you choose something different if you choose if you seriously want our world to be different then it does entail your active participation and your active internal transformation and or transmutation which is at a very deep level it's the work that I do with individuals because human nature is what is up for change right now that we no longer function from those first and second chakra aspects of humanity and this threat to our very existence that's first chakra all the way that you walk in fear all the time for your very life whether it's your health whether it's because of terrorism whether it's because of nuclear war we can't continue to exist if we are going to be in under constant threat of our very existence second chakra issues power over um, sexual distortion like again in rape and domination sexual domination all of the um, ways in which um, sex and power are used uh, destructively and the flip side to those aspects are magnificent 
when I'm working with clients and we are able to really go into the depth of an aspect of anger or fury or rage and transmute that at a very, very deep level, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, energetically, it actually reaches down into the DNA and changes the DNA of that person's lineage of that person's humanness and so that thread in the larger web of human of the human species is changed and that rage and fury now becomes passion and power to create um, when we change those first chakra issues of existence you know existential fear then you're walking in a level of security and peace in your own being in your right to exist in your presence in yourself on the planet in your physical sensation of being on the planet and with others and with the planet it's magnificent it's an absolutely magnificent plan design and each one of us each and every one had our own specific projects soul projects soul design soul blueprint for what we wanted to do here and it doesn't have to be something massive huge grand it can be very very small seemingly small but it still reweaves that web or that tapestry it still untangles and reweaves a tapestry of life of our choosing and I encourage you to look into biodiversity because for me that's the biggest threat of all is that we are breaking down the leading of one aspect or animal or insect into another and for our own benefit and because of the reduction in habitat so many animals are being threatened even in your very town or suburb raccoons possum oh it's just a dead possum well actually those possum are the ones that eat the ticks that we are being inundated with so you pull one piece out you pull another piece out and little by little that which holds the web up is going to collapse you know that that was another very very powerful the spider has been very very present for a, probably 10 days at this point representing that beautiful web that we live in representing the delicacy of it but the intricacy of it and the beauty of it for when you bump a spider's web it will recreate that section differently perhaps but it will recreate that and you know have its anchor points but if you tear through it or it gets ripped too much it is going to fall and if we remove too many pins in this web it is going to fall and you have so much power so so much power it doesn't feel like it I'm sure with all that's going on in the world but you do you do matter your choices are significant your purposefulness and on purposeness in being here at this time makes a difference feel the value of yourself <coughs> excuse me 
so you can feel the value of the other. So they can feel you valuing them. It is a back and forth. And again, that's what clients come to have. This beautiful back and forth. It's not just doing something for the earth or, you know, reaching out to the tree. But eventually to be able to feel the tree feeling you. And that's an intimate relationship. And that is what we all seek with ourselves, with those around us, with our planet. And now is the time. It's why it's screaming. It's why these issues are so, so critical right now. Because that's the opportunity. Those are the openings. And we have so much help. And those of you who are energy sensitive may have been experiencing this... Um, kind of blending and stirring and mixing of energetics and yes, terrible issues as well as all of the helpers. The oceans are reaching out to us. Spider is teaching us, representing to us this beautiful web and the ability to create. The oceans being the birthplace of creation itself. And the bull representing sacrifice. What are you willing to sacrifice? Whether it's in your individual life or whether it's globally for your future, for our future. And very, very powerfully the crow has been represented this week bringing forward law, spiritual law, laws of nature. We cannot keep breaking these laws and expect to go untouched. So allowing yourself to feel your body because it is through feeling that this is going to change. Not merely your mind, not merely thought, not merely consciousness. Allow any of the programs or articles or pictures or reports to touch you. Allow yourself to feel the forest, the animals, the oceans, and their feeling of being under threat. Again, that feeling being brought forward so strongly through the Ukrainian war feeling for those people, thinking about them, talking about it, is very, very different than actually having a felt sense of their distress. And we're able to be that sensitive and to feel that when and as we are able to feel ourselves and we're able to feel ourselves as we explore more deeply and more deeply the causes for our unfeelingness. Because they all stem from a means of trying to protect and numb ourselves from what was coming at us as children. Everyone had these same experiences.
through the transformation and transmutation of the now perceived need to protect and not feel We are designed as feeling beings. Much more than just thinking beings. And that emphasis on thinking over feeling has created this distance and disconnect. Within ourselves, between and among other humans, groups, and in relation to the earth and all the many beings that inhabit this planet just as we. They are all our relations. Allow yourself to feel your body, feel your internal, physical body. For as you do the energetics in this alchemical mix and blending of all that is occurring in your individual life, all that is occurring that we mentioned in regard to the earth, all the helpers, all the offerings, all the companions who are here to cooperate and collaborate with, be they in the non-physical, be they animal teachers, insects, birds, water beings, yourself to continue to just sink down. There's nothing you need to do, nothing you need focus on. On the contrary, to focus keeps you in your head. Simply feel your body seated on the couch, the chair, and the floor, whatever you may be. Allowing your weight to keep moving downward. No work, no effort, no push in that. For your body, your energy field, and your wider self know exactly how to bring you down and within you. It is simply a question of allowing. Simple not easy. But with that help, 
from your body, your energy field, and your wider self. You can allow yourself to simply follow or be led or experience however you want to. Relate. But it does mean coming out of your frontal lobe, your mind, your third eye, and instead having a physical, energetic, spiritual experience. Here in the Northern Hemisphere, it is springtime, and today on the East Coast happens to be a particularly beautiful one. No matter where you are in this country or any other country, Allowing the weather, the environment, the clouds, the rain, the snow, the sun, the heat, allowing them to come into your physical awareness, not your mental awareness. You can feel the air around you, you can smell Even taste, hear, and yes, see. Even living in a large city, there is sky and clouds and earth beneath you. All reaching out, offering themselves. You are not separate. As you allow yourself to drop down ever more deeply, you don't have to know how. That's the wondrous thing. Your energy field will do so on its own as you allow it. It may take some time, it may take a bit of practice in that allowing. But it is your natural state of being. It is your union with yourself. Allow the energy 
energetics to come to you <clears throat> rather than you having to seek out anything simply feel simply sensate Simply experience what you are feeling. Physically, energetically, perhaps even emotionally. No push, no work, no do. Allow it to be done for you. Allow the process to For the more you sensate your internal world and are able to connect and commune with your wisdom your knowing directly from your soul without the filter of a patterned brain you need not follow my words at all they don't matter it is simply a channel through which the energetics are being transmitted. And today, the energetics of the many helpers that were mentioned. But moreover, the earth herself For she is a living being with her own soul and soul trajectory. And as you feel you and your internal world, you are able to Feel the relationship. Feel her beingness. Feel her offering to be in relationship to and with you.
allow yourself to sink down another level without even having to know what that means or how to do it. Your energy field, your wider self, lead you in that simply as you ask. diversity, so much that's being offered, so much that is freely given. So much wonder. Again, simply feeling, if you find yourself going up to visioning or outward, remember, remember, down and within is where you Everything around you, everything and everyone is your neighbor. The flowers, the whales, the Arctic ice. to feel you in your home, the more easily you can feel your neighbors, be it in your own yard,
from across the world in the desert. Bringing in the beautiful and divine energy of Mr. Rogers. Won't you be my neighbor? Allow yourself to feel the kindness, the tenderness, the sensitivity. The sacredness. Just to the smallest. From the grandest to the simplest. All our relations. And as this feeling, sensating experience imprints deeply in you're able to slip back in and revisit, re-feel yourself and all that is here for you. And if you so choose at this point in time to move back into a more physicalized third dimensional experience, just as you followed your way in, allow your energy field and your wider self to lead you back in your timing, your rhythm, your pace, your way, not through your head. Just as you allow yourself to float up from the depths of the water to the surface once again, or just as you deliciously allow for that movement from sleep to wakefulness.
experiencing the in-between. And if you so choose to stay in this space within yourself in relation to these many aspects of Earth and more, know that whenever you choose, you will be fully integrated, fully consolidated in your experience so that you can go through the rest of your day still in but out. Enjoy this Earth Day, Earth Week, Earth Month, Earth Life. And I'd love to hear. You can post here or on YouTube what it is that you felt and what it is that you plan to sacrifice. for your benefit, for the benefit of all the rest of us. And as always, it is with the deepest of honor, gratitude, and love for your presence here on the planet. Until next time, be well.